The very essence of who we are as people comes from the land, comes from the river system. Long before we entered into treaty, we have lived and continue to live and sustain our people off of the land within northern Alberta and Saskatchewan and into the Northwest Territories. One of the reasons why we're targeting Shell is they're one of the largest multinational companies in the world and their application is coming up for approval right now. They are proposing a brand new open pit mine and it's encroaching closer and closer to our traditional territory. If we don't put our foot down somewhere, it will never stop. The main things I like about living in Fort Chippewan basically is, uh, aside from the scenery, is just uh, my ability to be able to go out in the land, you know, and practice my inherited right to hunt, fish, and trap, you know, like freely anytime I want. Fort Chip is a beautiful place. It's like medicine to the soul if you look at it. You know, you smile, you say, hey, thank you. You know, Father, Son, Mother Earth. Well, you go over there, take your camera, go to Dory Lake, Go to the lake out of the basket, you, you, you'll see the beauty of it all. This is the way we live in this land. As we see development start to ramp up in the province of Alberta, what's happening is that right, that constitutionally protected right to access our lands is starting to become more and more diminished. It's just polluting the, the air, water, land, animals, you name it. You know, so ultimately whatever ends up in that water you know, because uh, we're downstream from uh, from industry is what they're called, you know, and uh, we're downstream from industry. So with that, whatever goes into that water, if it's contaminated in any form, any way whatsoever, it's going to contaminate the plants, the animals, ultimately us. I lost family because of cancer. And the fingers are being pointed now that it's coming from the environment. What we've seen in, in recent past is this industrialization of our ACFN traditional territories, the lands that our people have used for time immemorial. And this has led to the cumulative removal of our lands, the wildlife, the fish habitats, the waterfowl habitats, and it's, in, it's been almost a complete destruction of the ecological and the aesthetic and the sensory systems that our people have always known and have always lived with and in harmony with. The beauty of the land, the beauty of life, you know, the freedom of it all is slowly being, you know, taken. We're land-based people. Our people go out on the land, we go hunting for long trips, and now we can't go to the river and we can't go to the lake and just you know pick up our water and drink it because that we don't know what the contamination levels are no one has done a thorough analysis to know what is the level of contamination in our water systems all we know is we see deformed fish and we see lesions on our fish and sick animals and the commonality between sick animals and the sick fish is water um, and people getting sick is it's water it's the only thing we can point to we have culture camps now where we're trying to pass on our knowledge, our knowledge holders in the community are passing on our tradition and our culture to younger generations. And the, this summer, one of the camps we had that was out in the bush, away from everything, the kids had to go by boat out to this camp. They had to ship all of the water to this camp so they could go and be in the bush for five days. And that's a major problem when you're talking about land-based people. That's an infringement of our right. If we can't access our land the way that we have been, and that includes being able to access clean water, then it's an infringement of our right. Uh, there's governing bodies that are help to help to regulate and steer these corporations or the oil industry into a more ethical, environmentally friendly direction. And that's not happening right now. Everything, every kind of protocol we're play, putting in place right now, this current government is, a, is allowing them to find loopholes to exploit. 
or just giving them the green to keep going. I see our indigenous identity being rubbed out. It's who we are, just getting taken away, just for the development of industry. You know, it's very easy to see how the federal, the provincial, and industry are all hand in hand and cahoots, you know, I mean, they all work together uh, with one purpose to extract the tar sands at any cost. And we're downstream. I mean, we're just a few people here. Who really gives a shit about Fort Chip, really? We've made deals with, with Shell Oil in 2006 and 2003 regarding their existing projects, impact benefit agreements, where our leadership thought they were doing what was in the best interests of our people to protect that. And to date, uh, Shell Oil hasn't really lived up to those agreements. Bottom line is, we're the ones that are paying for their greed. Their leadership has realized that, yeah, you know, maybe we now have Wi-Fi and cell phones and laptops in the community for Chippewan and satellite television, but at what cost? And that's where it comes in. The cost is our constitutionally protected rights, our treaty rights is what we are basically selling, and we need to stop that. Our rights to the land, our rights to access the lands, and even a deep understanding of our rights wasn't really being addressed in the way proposals were being pushed forward and pushed through the approval process. And, you know, ACFN is saying, enough is enough. It's time to draw a line in the sand. We need free, prior, and informed consent. We need to have our rights protected, not just now, but into the future. I'll stand my ground, I'll fight, I'll fight to the end. I'll ensure that my kids, my grandchildren are gonna be able to, um, to live the life that I did when I was a kid. You don't want to live up to your agreements with us, then we're taking you to court. Shortly after we filed suit, Shell also put applications in for two new projects. One is an expansion of an existing mine, the Jack Pine Mine and one is the development of a brand new open pit mine called Pierre River Mine. And that mine will be 27 kilometers from the border of the Poplar Point Reserve. This in itself is, is, is a breach of our constitutionally protected rights that we are, that our previous generations, that our elders and our ancestors signed those treaties to protect those rights for us for the generations that followed them. And now we're seeing that the landscape is being destroyed by industrialization, and there's so much at stake. We have an entire culture of an entire peoples to lose if we don't do something to change the pace and the rate and the way that approvals go through.